So seven days ago, I published a video on how to test water pump on Pojo vehicles without uh, removing it from the engine to inspect. So uh, this video, I want to talk about how you can test the engine cooling system thermostat without also removing it. Uh, from the engine to inspect or to test of the vehicle uh, So if you haven't washed that of the water pump uh, I would advise you go and wash wash it because it's for your own good uh, Not for me Likewise this one I will encourage anyone who uh, drives project vehicle or owns project vehicle to watch this video um, to the end to know how you not the mechanic you can be able to tell if the thermostat is the cause of your overheating to uh, uh, prevent your mechanic from damaging or uh, your thermostat that especially the original ones that are not easily available or more expensive so um so now if you uh, let's assume you are traveling or uh, you are the car is handling that the vehicle is stationary uh, or is you you know you are driving in the city and suddenly your car starts overheating you know so you see your temperature gets start shooting up beyond where it used to be or uh, you know that will start to heat close to the red zone or almost into the red zone. So what you do is, you stop the vehicle, switch off the engine, then you open the bonnet. So when you open the bonnet, um, you look down on the radiator, the gap between the radiator and the engine. So you will find uh, among the horses, that will connect uh, the radiator to the engine. You'll find two of them will be bigger than the others. In some, depending on the model of uh, the, the radiator or the engine, uh, some may have more than two hoses, some three, some maybe four, but no matter what, there must be two. You can't have more less than two hoses. And uh, like I say, even if he has up to three or four horses, among those horses, two will be bigger than the others. And those two usually will be uh, the same size or one may be a little bit bigger than the other. But look out for the two biggest uh, horses that go from the radiator to the engine. Uh, now... Uh, you can see on the picture uh, in this video, uh, you see the one I circled. So that's uh, the this is the one you find it in Pojo 406 with uh, EW engines. Likewise, other Pojo vehicles that have uh, that have EW engines. Um, there's another one picture I want to show. Uh, for example, this one is um, Pojo 505 V6. So uh, this is um, uh, and also one of the horses, bigger horses. If I has only two big, uh, only two horses that connect the radiator to the engine. So this is one uh, of them. Now, uh, normally we will refer to this uh, one, uh, these two that I circled. I refer them as the upper radiator hose. Um, but it doesn't necessarily, uh, okay, you could still call it upper. But the reason why I say upper is that sometimes, depending on the radiator models and the engine, some, hose, so, some, some of the radiators, the two hoses will be on top of the radiator. Unlike this one, that one is on top, then the other. The second hose is uh, on the bottom of the radiator. Likewise, this one. One is on top, 
uh, while the other is down. But there are some radiator models that, like the V6 ones, uh, like ES uh, radiators, and um, other ones, some you will find the, the, the radiator hoses by the side. Like the, there are the V6 radiator in Pojo 4 hoses, the two hoses are by the side of the radiator. The that of the SU engine, I think, is also by the side. Can't remember. No, one is under, one is. Uh, you know, they are both different sides, but not like on top of the radiator. So they are both on the side, but for the VCs, they are only at one side. I think the left side. So, see, what matters is not uh, which one is on top, which one is under, but. Focus on the two bigger hoses. However, out of those two, one will be upper, one will be lower hose. Forget about which one, whether it's arranged in that uh, way on your own radiator. It's just that if you are a technical person, what you now do, you follow the hose, you see where it, how it connects to the engine. From there, you could tell, okay, this is the upper, this is the lower, but it doesn't matter. For example, even THP engines. Uh, the way they design the thermostat house, it may even be difficult to tell which is the upper and the lower. So, in other words, it be, makes it insignificant to bother to know which is the upper or lower. But just focus on which of these hoses that connect to the radiator are two bigger ones. If there is only two that are connected to the radiator, then those two are your area of focus where you do this test. If there are more than two, look for the ones two that are bigger than the others. Bother, bother about the rest. You know, so that's what I mean. Um, so uh, when you now locate uh the two for it will be very obvious, like I said, you see it between there's always a gap between the engine and the radiator. So don't it's not something you have to start stretching your eyes or uh, look for somebody to educate you to show you which one no. Once you open your bonnet, you see it, you know, you see it, as, as long as you know what radiator is. So, why, since the engine has overheated, right, uh, so it will be very hot, very, very hot. So, what you do is, you touch, use your hand, touch uh, the two bigger hoses, that uh, uh, you know connected between the engine and the radiator. Touch the just touch the. I, I understand it will be hot, but not extremely hot to you know uh, cause a, an injury on your hand. No. But you need to know what the problem is. Touch the upper. No, just touch both of them. Those sources that I mentioned. If any of those two. At the point your car is overheating, if any of these two is hotter than the other, if your engine is overheating, I touch those two big hoses, and one of them is hot, that's very very hot, and the other is cold, or uh, a little bit. Uh, okay, let's just. Uh, I'll come to that. If one is very cold. Not like cold, like ice block, Tom. But if one is cold and one is extremely hot, it means your thermostat has failed. Period. Means your thermostat has failed. Or your thermostat has refused to open. Now you can fail in uh, like two ways. You can fail by staying open without closing. So it will be running as if your thermostat, uh, there's no thermostat in, uh, on the engine. Or it can fail by staying permanently uh, closed. Uh, so in that case, um, it will cause overheating. The other will not cause overheating, but the closed one will cause overheating. So if you have that experience, if you do that and realize one is hot, one is cold, your thermostat has failed. Now, there's another one too. That can make it look like uh, it's thermostat, but it's not thermostat. 
if you do that, if you touch the upper and it's hot, uh, no, if you touch one, it is hot, you touch the other one, you realize a little bit um, more like warm, but not hot. Or you could say it's not as hot as the, the first one you touch. Or one of them is a little bit uh, warm, while the other one is extremely hot. It means two things. Your either there is air in the system that is causing that overheating, or your water pump has failed. So, but if you touch and one is like as if you know how when you start you you open your bonnet in the morning before you will start the car for the first time you touch those sources that's how it will feel no matter how hot the engine is that's how it's going to feel so yes in that case you know this is your problem the problem is your thermostat so likewise you can do the test even without uh when your engine is hot already like you start in the first uh, in the morning I want to know truly how good your thermostat is. Start the vehicle, you know, when it's still cold, allow it to idle, run. Now, when, if the engine is cold, how do you know when to, uh, to do the test on the horses? Do it after maybe like between 5 to 10 minutes of the engine at idle. As long as your cooling fan is factory uh, connected. That's the ones with the electric cooling fan. As long as factory connected, if if it's the one that has been bypassed and is spinning constantly with the engine running or ignition uh, switched on, uh, then uh, the ten minutes, with five to ten minutes, won't be enough to know. But if it's factory fitted. You start it, no matter how cold the weather is, and also if you are using coolant. If what you have in the system is coolant, between the 5 to 10 minutes, one of those sources is supposed to become warm or a little bit hot. Not extremely hot when the engine has warmed up. But if you tell you know that, okay, it's warm, but not that hot. So one of those sources is supposed to feel that way. And the other will stay cold. It means your thermostat. Um, what it means is, if you do it, it means there is thermostat on the system. But if you touch any of those two, and both of them, by after like 10 minutes of running, and you touch any of those sources and they still feel cold, and you have coolant, and you have, and the, the, the coolant is on your engine, and uh, what else? The fan is factory connected and the engine has run for about 10 minutes. No, then there is no thermostat on that engine. Because after 10 minutes of idle, the, you check your temperature will like, come, uh, you know, climb up a little. Sometimes closer to 70 degrees Celsius. At that time, one of the hoses is supposed to feel warm, no matter what. If your what you have on your system is because water takes longer to 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 warm up, that's why I'm indicating thermos, uh, coolant. Coolant warms up faster. So if you, what you have is coolant and the fan is off at that time, that's factory connected. And within ten minutes, your one of the hoses is supposed to feel hot because your temperature gauge is supposed to climb up a little at that time. So you can be able to tell if you have thermostat. So if one feels cold, one feels warm, there is thermostat. So if, uh, how, to know how good your thermostat, it means you have to now wait uh, till your temperature gauge gets uh, to like 90, 90 something, 80. Because it depends. Some thermostat opens at uh, 82 degrees Celsius, some 79, some even 72 some 89, so it all depends. So, uh, some 82. So, it, it depends. You can't say, oh, you must get to the 90 degrees Celsius before uh, the thermostat will open. No. 
So you could open depending on the model of thermostat on that engine or the opening temperature of thermostat on that engine. So um, it means you have to wait longer than that 10 minutes to now know. Uh, but the easiest way to know is uh, when you're fan, you wait, let it run without AC, don't switch on the AC, even if it takes up to 30 minutes. Once your fan sp starts spinning, once it starts spinning, it means yes, okay, uh, the thermostat at that time is supposed to have opened and circulated the coder or fluid in the radiator to the engine. So uh, that time, touch those sources, uh, you will feel uh, that both will be hot at that time. Once your fire starts spinning, it means two of them are supposed to be hot at that time. But if your first fan starts spinning and one is cold, it means your thermostat is short or has failed. But like I said, if air is trapped in the system, it can also behave as if your thermostat uh, is bad or has failed. However, it will still be a little bit warmer than the one that doesn't have thermostat at all. So, uh, likewise, if your water pump is weak, uh, it will behave that way because it's no longer circulating very well. So, uh, one will be extremely hot, the other one a little bit warm, but not as hot as the other. So, uh, for the, when you do the, let's ask, the first one I mentioned, your engine is overheating. And then you open your bonnet, you switch out the engine, but the temperature has already gone to, or has started indicating to your engine is overheating. And you touch both hoses. Like I said, if your thermostat is good, two of them, um, yeah, if your thermostat is the cause of the overheating, one is supposed to be very cold or cold. So, but if you touch those two hoses and both are hot, if both of those sources are hot when your engine is overheating, then do not touch your thermostat. Forget about it. Leave your thermostat alone. It's not your thermostat. Whatever that is causing the overheating has nothing to do with thermostat. So in that case, you look elsewhere. Find whatever that is causing it, but don't go and start messing with your thermostat. No matter whoever the technician that comes and says, hey, is your thermostat or we need to remove it, tell the person, like I always say, to fuck off. Protect your engine. Stop being too desperate to fix your this thing and damage your engine in the process. I understand in detail you want your car to move, but that doesn't mean you, because you may not be able to get another good thermostat. Once they remove that one that is working and damage it, you may not be able to find another good thermostat unless you have to spend heavy to get one. Yes, you may maybe look for a used one, but then like that used one, you may mount it today and tomorrow it will fail. Because you don't know the lifespan, maybe it has exceeded 200,000 kilometers. And this thermostat, usually after like 100,000, in fact, some may not even reach. Because after about 100,000, they start to pack up gradually, they start failing gradually until they no longer close. You know, I'm not saying it's a standard that after 100,000 kilometers they will fail, but expect at that point it may fail at any time. It may last beyond that or may not even last up to 100,000. So if you're buying a used one, don't expect that uh, you still have another ten to 20,000 to use on that thermostat. It may not even last you the next 50 kilometers. Doesn't matter how it looks. So don't be quick to go and damage your thermostat that you probably still have up to 100,000 uh, kilometer life uh, uh, remaining on that thermostat. It could also be that the previous user in the Western world have changed it, put another OEM or another quality one only for you to go and damage it. Because you may end up having to import another one if it comes to that, if you go and damage the good one you have. So stop beating about the bush. Damage it because once you remove your table start, you are still running it without it. Like I said, your injury will die sooner than you expect. 
Anybody telling you otherwise is deceiving you. Your that engine, give it time. Most of it will even be two up to two years. Why you not start experiencing it? all of a sudden it's, it's not realizing that the engine is shutting oil more than it should? You also start realizing your off-well consumption is going a little bit higher than it should. Because your engine will not start running colder than it should. You to stay the uh, cold engine. Even if you stay cold for long, it's running friction is going on, it's killing, it's, it's wearing out much faster or rapidly. So, leave your thermostat intact. If it fails, remove it, buy and put another one. Even if you can't find the original new one, you may buy a fake one and put on the interim. Then you look for that original one. Because that fake one, if you rely on it, it could fail the day you don't expect. Maybe you are traveling, you just pack up on the road. You know, so stop killing your thermostat. Stop removing your thermostat damage. You got one funny thing is most time as they're removing it, they are damaging it. So know how to do this test. Now uh, this thing I mentioned is at least for people that live in hot areas like Nigeria or in hot climate, if you if you say it that way. Because those that live in the West, like uh maybe very cold climate. Doing that test, like the one I mentioned in the morning, uh, when you start your car, you start running, you want to know if your when are the host when the horses will become hot. It might take longer than that. Because in most of those countries that farm hardly even come up. Because like during the winter when there is ice everywhere, <laughs> I mean you farm will likely stay uh, off all through that weather. And it may come out, I don't know, but like I said, the, the weather, the, the ambient temperature is enough to keep the engine cold, even without the fan. You know, so, um, so that in that case, their own test might differ. But the idea of, but the, the other one still matters. It's still the same, like uh, if your engine is overheating and the two horses are, are uh, hot, yeah, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter with the weather. Both of them are meant to be hot. If your thermostat is still good. If it's not good, one will stay cold. However, like I said, just because it's cold doesn't necessarily mean it must be thermostat. It depends on how cold it is. Air pocket or what's it called? Uh air pocket that if air is trapped inside your cooling system, it can make your thermostat not to open. Once the air gets behind that thermostat, it stays there, it won't allow you to open. Because air, air will stay, you don't, the fluid will not really touch the thermostat for you to sense the true temperature of your this thing. So it will stay close. That has been my experience. So well, what will happen is, so you will not stay completely close, but it will be a little bit, maybe open a little. I don't know how to put it, but you will feel, uh, the other host may feel a little bit warm, but... Uh, in other, in, you could say, okay, if one of your horses feels cold and the other one feels very hot and your engine starts overheating, the first thing to, for you to do is to at least bleed the system. Wait for the engine to cool down, bleed it when you know the temperature is safe enough to open the bleed valve and bleed. One of the places you could do it with, so that I won't touch you is like... Um, one of these ones, uh, the one on thermostat housing. But those ones, uh, okay, depending on the model. Some models have a bleed uh, valve, so you don't even need to use your hand to touch that uh, place. But some is like a small cap. So in that case, you have to use your hand to, uh, to uh, uh, unlock the cap. So in that case, if the water is very hot at that time, so it's not going to be fun. So if you need to bleed, look for one of the coolant lines that you don't really need your hand to touch, to bleed, but the engine still needs to be cold or at least calm down a little before you do that bleeding. So bleed first, then do uh, the test again. So if you start overheating after you have bled the engine properly, then um, the problem is truly not air, or trapped air in the system that your thermostat. If it's water pump, it will, uh, it will see it will be a little bit warm, but not that, uh, 
cold. It will, you know. Because, yeah, the water is not circulating, but somehow the thermostat to open once it's hot. So that once it opens, the hot one in the other one will kind of transfer that heat to the host. But it won't be truly that hot. So um, I hope this helps. At least now you know how you can test your thermostat without even removing it or replacing any part. Um, so like I said, if it feels that you are not sure if it's thermostat or air that is trapped on the engine, bleed. Wait for the engine to cool down. If you can, in fact, the best way bleed all the cooling points, all the uh, cooling system bleeding points, not just one. But it may be easier to start from the one that uh, you may not need to touch your hand with because um, it might be very hot. But it bleed after bleeding to it. If it continues, then it's not your uh, air. It means it's your water uh, thermostat. As for the water pump, do you can also do a water pump test. Um, do the water pump test. So I rule that one out too. So you need to go and watch that video how to bleed or how to test water pump without removing the uh thermo the water pump or removing any part to test. So do, go and watch that video, learn that one too. So I do all these tests from there. You know, okay, if the if the low, one of the horses is hot, uh, is cold, I've done the bleeding. And you test it for the water pump, and the, there is no air in the system. And the water pump, sh the test you did showed the water pump is working very well. Yet one of the horses still remain uh, cold. Then, we, when the temperature has gone up very high, or the fan has started spinning, then your problem certainly is your thermostat. So. Um, I hope this video helps. I know I've done this. See, I've written all kinds of articles, posts, video. Yeah, I think I've also I've done video on how to test uh, thermostat without removing it from the engine. But I can't remember. You know, I have, have I know I have close to eight hundred videos now published. I said, let me do this one again. You know, so that people will learn. Those who want to learn. Those who want not want to learn. Claiming that my videos are usually long. I'm waiting for the day you they will meet that problem. For them to now start calling me. Uh, for me to give them this advice or solution for free. I will not. If you call me privately, you have to pay. Unless you paid for it already. Like people that pay for full consultant services. Yes, that's their, uh, they pay for that service. So I always attend to them. But if you call me on by any time, because you have, you have that chance now to learn it now for free. But if you think you, you are entitled to wait until when the problem you because to you, why would I waste your time or my data to learn something for free? But I'll wait until when the, if the problem surface, I'll call him. So I need to leave whatever he's doing because he doesn't have a life. I own his life. So he should leave every other thing, whatever is, that is going on in his life at that moment. He's supposed to give me that attention for free. I will cut you off. So learn it now. It's for your own good, not for my own good. Because if it happens, you are the one to suffer, not me. I already know what to do in my own case. So it's up to you to know what to do, or you let the mechanics to be damaging your engines and be complaining when you are the one that allowed them. You are the one that is at least few things, some basic things you're supposed to know how you can what's how to do yourself. You are choosing not to, and then looking for who to push the blame to. Because to you, why should you take responsibility of something you have authority over? So to you, it's not uh, acceptable. Anyway, so that's all for this video.